Greetings, dear brothers and sisters. Let's all open our Bibles together and follow along in the letter of Philippians as we are working our way through this letter that Apostle Paul wrote in a very difficult time in his life. It was when he was in prison and he did not know whether his next step would be execution or will he be delivered and freed to keep on preaching the gospel. So we, we already started a little bit. We went through the first chapter, and now we will be looking at verses 19 through 21. The, the main theme of this letter is the joy and the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And we see how Paul, in this difficult situation, difficult circumstances, he, he retained his joy and was able, to, was able to encourage those that were in prison. Uh, he was, while he was in prison, he was able to encourage those that were free. And we know that even though Paul did not have a pulpit like we see here, he was still able to preach. And he wasn't, uh, he wasn't preaching like we typically think about it, but the chains that he had in his hands, they were preaching. And the bars in his cell, they were preaching the word of God. They were preaching and testifying to the glory of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we think that when, uh, when persecution comes that maybe we will like, uh, become very fearful and shrink away and not be as bold for the gospel, but it's usually the exact opposite that happens. When persecution comes, usually the Christian becomes very bold and proclaims the gospel. And it's just like what happened to Paul in this difficult situation, he still retained his joy and preached the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's, let's read these three verses together and see what the Lord has to say for us here. Verse 19, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now, also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. What a wonderful, what a wonderful phrase that Apostle Paul was able to say about his life. This was the key uh, verse of, um, I guess, what Paul lived for was Christ. And this one verse, 21, summarizes everything he lived for. So Paul, when he was in prison, he was not in despair. He had joy and he, was, he had more joy than a lot of people that were uh, walking in freedom. And he was, he's, he's, the only way he could uh, retain this joy is because of what it says in verse 21. To live is Christ. To live is Christ. This is a foundational uh, principle that every Christian should live by. To live is Christ. And that's what I would like to focus on today. So the title of my message is Making the Most of Your Christian Life. To not live a half-hearted life, to not live on the fence as we sometimes hear, but to be wholly devoted to our Lord and Jesus Christ. And in this test, uh, statement, Paul is saying that everything he lived for before, everything he's living for now or in the future is totally devoted to Jesus Christ and to bring glory to him. So I have uh, three things I would like to share in this short sermon today. And a lot of times we, we pass over this verse and we we, when we think for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, a lot of times we focus on the second part, to die is gain, and we sometimes share this at, at a funeral. But I think for us it's very important to look at what does it really mean to live is Christ. And I would like to share three things. The first thing I would like to share is what does it mean to live is Christ. So to live is Christ means to live in Christ. To live in Christ. That's what the first thing that... Apostle Paul wants us to understand. And of course, Apostle Paul knew very perfectly what it meant to be in Christ because his whole adult life, he was without Christ, he was persecuting Christ, yet at the same time, he believed he was doing God a service. He thought that he was doing God 
a favor by destroying the Christians that were so boldly proclaiming Jesus. So Paul knew what it was to be without Christ. And here, now he's saying, to, for me, to live is Christ. To live in Christ, to know him personally. And also to grow in the knowledge of Christ. To live in Christ means to pursue the knowledge of Christ. We want to know Christ better and better each day, and that's what Apostle Paul is calling us here in this uh, verse. Paul knew that being what it meant to be born again because he knew that burden that he carried for most of his life on his shoulders when he was trying to fulfill the law, when he was trying to be good in his own flesh, and he knew that that never gave him the peace. And then on the road to Damascus, we know how his whole life transformed in just one instance when Jesus revealed himself to Paul, and from that moment, as soon as he saw, he asked, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. And the next, question, the next statement was, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? So Saul, we know Saul, he was born in the flesh, but Paul, he was born of the Spirit, and he was the one that can say this statement boldly, to live is Christ. Now let, let's look at the same letter, letter, but chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Apostle Paul really brings it all together, what it means to be in Christ. Philippians 3, 9. It says here, To be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Notice how here twice it says, in him, to be found in him. And then he talks about what he used to try to do, the righteousness of the law, and that never brought him any joy. But then he says, but to have the, joy, the righteousness of Christ, like it says in the second part of this verse, but that which is in Christ. So the first thing is to, to pursue, to live in Christ means to pursue the knowledge of Christ, to constantly grow in Christ and be confident that you are in Christ. So the second thing is to live in Christ means we are able to, uh, we are made complete in him. To live in Christ is we are made complete in him. Without Christ, we have no, uh, no purpose. Without Christ, we, ha we have nothing to fill our empty souls that's why a lot of people that have everything in life, maybe even millionaires or billionaires, they, they end up killing themselves, committing suicide when they have everything that you can possibly have money-wise, financially, but they have an emptiness in their heart because they never had uh, Christ come into their heart. So without Christ, we will never find the true purpose. And Colossians uh, chapter 2, verse 9 tells us about this being complete in him. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. So you are made complete. The Russian word is polnata. We are made fullness to uh, uh, the, the Russian word is to make us complete. Some other translations use the word to make us perfect. We are complete in Christ. So that's what it means to be in Christ. And another thing I would like to point out is that to live in Christ means we find our identity in Christ. Paul understood really well what it was to, to boast about his, future, uh, his past, what he, all the things that he accomplished in his life. Uh, being uh, from the tribe of Benjamin, being, uh, teach, uh, being taught under Gamaliel, one of the best teachers, and have, having perfect knowledge of the law, but that did not satisfy, that did not, uh, he did not complete him. So to live in Christ means we find our identity in Christ. So I have a question. If somebody, you meet somebody that is new and you do not know them, and they ask, so what is your name? And then they say, tell me a little bit about yourself. What do we usually say about ourselves? We, we say, well, I, I, I was born in this country or in this city or state. I, I go to this high school or this college. I, I like to play this sport. I play this uh, guitar or 
I like to help out in the community. I go to church. I do this, I do that, and then, yes, I'm also a Christian. Is that how we uh, address ourselves, or do we, do we say from the beginning, my life to live is Christ? That's what Apostle Paul understood it. He, everything for him was Christ. To live is Christ. Everybody that was in, around that area, everybody that heard about Paul, they knew exactly why he was in jail. They knew he was there not because he was a Hebrew, not because he was from the tribe of Benjamin, not because he was a Pharisee before, not because he knew the law or any other reason, not because he was circumcised, but for one reason alone, because he loved Christ and he preached Christ. That's the only reason he was in prison. If we look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, it tells us to have the identity in Christ alone. And that's what Apostle Paul was talking about. To live is Christ. So here in Galatians 3.27 he says, For all of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all one. So when we are in Christ, though we have different roles, though we some are elders, some are uh, musicians, some, are, some have different roles in the church, but we are all one in Christ. There's no distinction anymore. So we, our identity should be completely found in Christ. So we looked at what it means to be in Christ. So let's look at the second point. To live is Christ. What does that mean? To live is Christ means we live through Christ. We, we live our life through Christ. So to live through Christ means that we imitate the example of Christ. We live the way God wants us to live by looking at the word of God and seeing how Jesus lived when he was on earth and how he would want us to live. And Apostle Paul lived, uh, lived, this, perfect ex uh, lived this example for us, for the church, and he knew what it meant to, be, to walk after Christ because even, even though he was unperfect, and we know so many of his writings in in Romans, where he says, woe is me because I want to do right, but I do wrong. And in all that, he still says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And this statement is not at all in any way to think that he's boasting. It's the exact opposite. He is humbling himself to the point where he's saying, I do everything that Christ wants me to do. So we are humbling we're walking humbly when we say, I live for Christ because we're pointing to Christ. We're not pointing to ourselves. And a lot of times we hear this phrase, what would Jesus do? And this is an exact, uh, a good example of what just we would look at the word of God and see how Jesus lived and what we should do. Not too long ago, we, we studied First John chapter 4, verse 9. And in this uh, verse, it tells us how, what's the reason why God sent his son into the world. And let's look at this verse together. First John 4, 9. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world. And the question is why? Why did he do all this? And the answer follows. So that we might live through him. We might live through him, not for ourselves, but live through him that our life would be a reflection of Jesus Christ. Just like last night, uh, it was really late and I walked out in the dark and it was surprisingly very, very bright outside because the moon was really bright. I could see everything clearly and I was, that caused me to think, how could it be so bright? Sometimes it's really dark outside. And this is, when we think about the moon, the moon doesn't have any light of its own. It just reflects the light of this huge ball of fire that shines on it. And the sun reflects, uh, shines on the moon and it gives us light at night. This is exactly how we should look at ourselves, that the light of Christ should be seen through us so that we can imitate, uh, follow after Christ, that we imitate the example of Christ. And another thing I would like to point out is that to live through Christ means you recognize your weakness. To live through Christ means we recognize that we can't do anything on our own. And Paul knew this very well. He knew that he was just a clay vessel that God would use. And that's why in, in this 
uh, verses that we read, here in verse 20, the end of 20, it says, So how also Christ may be magnified in my body, whether I live or die. Paul understood that um, he was weak and God knew best what, whether he would be delivered from jail and be able to preach in other places or whether he would have to die for him. He knew that God has the best for him. He knew that he was just a clay vessel. And Paul knew that he had limits, but he knew the God that had no limits. And he, was, he worshipped this God. That's why he was able to completely uh, trust in the Lord. And here in, in verse 20, it says, To magnify God in my body. And even though this, uh, this might be very difficult sometimes, because we understand that our body, our flesh is weak, but if we do not glorify God in our flesh, then we do not glorify God at all because uh, the Word of God says that uh, we are the temple of God. So that our bodies are the temples of God and we have to live in a way that is uh, glorifying to God. And then also in this uh, same epistle, chapter 4, verse 13, I'm pretty sure this verse, every one of us heard it at one time or another. It's a very famous verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So what does this verse say? I can do all things through Christ. It's another reminding that we are weak and the only way we can do anything is when we fall completely on the mercy of Christ and say, Lord, I can't do this on my own, but please give me strength to live, to be free from sin, to be completely dev devoted to you. And the last point I would like to mentioned before we pray is to live as Christ means to live for Christ to live for Christ so to live for Christ means we give our uh, give up our fleshly accomplishments all our accomplishments that we uh, did before our we were uh, converted it means nothing because we were doing it in our flesh and in the same epistle chapter 3 verse 7 and 8 Apostle Paul also talks about this, that what he counts, um, everything that he did was nothing because he realized he was doing it in his own flesh. And he was not doing it for Christ, he was doing it for himself. And if we look at Philippians 3.7, it says, But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus my Lord, for him I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. So here in these few ver uh, verses it uh, says twice that to do everything for Christ, count it lost for Christ, to live for Christ alone. The, all the accomplishments that we did without Christ, it means nothing. We have to to trust God that he will use, um, that we, we would be able to glorify God and serve him the way he wants to. Because, like I said before, that Paul thought he was serving God when he was persecuting the church. But when he, he, he came to the presence of God, he realized that he was persecuting the church. And second thing is, to live for Christ also means that we proclaim the gospel of Christ. We proclaim the gospel of Christ, that Everywhere we go, we can preach about Christ. And if we look at the example of Paul, we see that he preached everywhere he went. And we sometimes think, oh, well, he was such a great apostle. That's why he preached everywhere. But, but we, if we think about it, that we, he preached in synagogues. He pre preached at the riverside. He preached as a prisoner. He preached as an apostle. He, he also preached as a tent maker. And, and when he was on the ship with, uh, with his... Uh, Mates on the ship, he also preached as a sailor. So many different situations. So even though he was an apostle, a lot of times he was just a simple tent maker and he still preached. He still found the right words to tell the people about the greatness of Jesus Christ. So his message was always the same. Even though he preached to different audiences at different times, his message never changed. And his message was always, preach Christ and him crucified. Preach Christ and Him crucified and also risen from the dead and the one that ascended and the one that's coming in glory. That's what was Paul's main message. 
So Paul never preached uh, one message to a great king and then another one to a slave because that would be hypocrisy. He always preached Christ crucified. He always preached the same message. And he also preached to all this, those people that he met. He always preached to either kings, to, to soldiers. He preached to slaves. He preached to prisoners. He preached to statesmen. He preached to philosophers, to priests, and Jews and Gentiles, and men and women. Everybody who would listen, he preached the gospel to them. So to live as Christ also means to, to live for Christ means to preach the gospel, to just live it out in your life. And the last thing I would like to point out is that to live for Christ means to do all things for his glory. To live for Christ means to do all things for his glory. This is a, a theme that we had not too long ago when we, when we discussed the five solas of the Reformation, to soli deo gloria, to do everything for the glory of God. Whether big or small, uh, we should do it all for Jesus. Because when we look at 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. For the glory of God, not for your own self. And this also includes being willing to suffer for Christ freely. Because Apostle Paul, he was willing to suffer freely. And remember when he was converted in, in Acts, it's, it tells him that Christ revealed how much he would have to suffer for him. And I always I ask myself the question, Lord, this is just a new baby Christian. Why do you tell him right away how much he will have to suffer? Maybe he will, he will become fearful and not want to serve you. But that's not what happened to him. Apostle Paul, even though he saw, he saw all those beatings, he saw the stones he would have to, sh uh, to take, he saw the chains, he saw the shipwrecks, he saw the, the false accusations, he saw all the evil that we'll have to, he would have to bear, and in, through all that, he still decided to fully devote his life to Christ, because he saw who Jesus was, and he saw that the emptiness he had without him, and once he met this person, the person of Jesus Christ, he saw the joy that he had and he wanted to share it. So my question is to myself and to all of us, what if Christ would reveal even half of the things we would have to suffer for, for him? Would we still follow him? Would we still serve him or we would say, oh, that, is that what it's going to cost to serve God? Maybe, I, maybe I'll just live a comfortable life in, in the shadows and nobody will know that I'm a Christian. If we, if we become bold like Apostle Paul did and tell people about Christ, then persecution will come inevitably. Life will not always be as comfortable as it is now because when you see how the world is becoming more and more hostile to the church, and if we, are truly, if we truly walk in the light, then people will begin to hate us and begin to persecute us. So we looked at this phrase right here in verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And even though Apostle Paul knew that it was a far greater thing to be in the presence of the Lord, he knew that it, was, it would be useful for him to be in the body because he knew how much more work there needed to be done. So he totally trusted God. He trusted God that Christ knows the best for him. So we looked a little bit of what this means, to live as Christ, to, be, to completely devote yourself to Christ. So in conclusion, to live as Christ means that Christ becomes our focus. He becomes our goal and our main desire in life, that we totally live for him. So Christ is the center point of our mind and body and soul, and everything we live for is for Christ. That's what this verse here means, that to live is Christ. And everything that we do, we do for the glory of Christ. As we run the race that is marked out before us, and as we fix our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith, we, see, we trust him because we know he's a good God. We know that he loves us and he wants the best for us, and we should just trust him and live uh, our life in a way that people around us can see the glory of Christ. Uh, now we have an opportunity to pray. So let, let's think about this and how Apostle Paul was able to, to glorify Christ and just totally devote himself to Christ. So we, to check ourselves, do we live in such a way where we can say to ourselves and to others, for me to live is Christ. And even if it meant to die for him,
it would be a great honor because I will be in the presence of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Amen.